guys welcome back to my channel and today I thought it would be fun to do some sort of a throwback review on paranormal state so hopefully you guys remember paranormal state it was an old-school show I believe it came out in 2007 and the last time it aired or final season was 2011 I actually really loved paranormal state um, it actually came out before ghost adventures and to me it was just really cool because it was kind of groundbreaking for being accepted as a part of paranormal in the media so if you don't know who the host was, it was Mr. Ryan Buell, who was actually founder of the Paranormal Research Society out of Penn State. He developed the society when he was 19, when he was going to college. The show was picked up by A&E, which is where it aired there for the duration of the time. Ryan originally served as the director since he was the founder of the Paranormal Research Society. Since Ryan was the founder of the Paranormal Research Society, also known as PRS, but eventually Ryan did step up as one of the co-executive producers. So the one thing that I really liked about Paranormal State was um, it was the first kind of site of raw footage of doing the investigation. I really like at the beginning of the, in of the investigations that Ryan's talking into the digital recorder. He's kind of doing an overview for the audience and he's like setting it up for you to understand what you're going into. They do some sort of like production meeting usually mostly at the beginning of every investigation. And a lot of the time these investigations are surrounded by like demonic infestations or trying to remove some sort of exorcism using a priest or you know some sort of a religious prophecy. Ryan was really great at what he, he did. His voice was very captivating. For some reason, it made you really want to pay attention to him. He was excellent at like doing narration and even like the voiceover work and the writings that he would do. The one thing that I always hated was that they never had the best evidence come out of you know the night vision equipment and stuff. But the problem is you have to remember when this show first came out, it was 2007, and that's when night vision really started to kind of take off, or maybe even pre-night vision. There had been a lot of problems with night vision cameras, and that's because they were actually x-ray vision. You could see through the clothing. So that could be why we didn't see the best evidence come from Paranormal State. It always seemed really authentic to me. I just really liked the setup of the show. And this is also where we got to meet Chip Coffee, which is also known as one of the biggest psychics in the paranormal, who's to me a very legitimate person. And of course, Ryan always had, since he lived on the East Coast, Lorraine Warren come in as a psychic and do help with him. He would always have her work with him, which I am so jealous of. One day, all I want to do is meet Lorraine Warren. Like, I think she's the coolest person ever. And go to her haunted museum. And, like, she does these buffets where she invites everybody to buy a ticket and go fly into Connecticut and have dinner with her. Like, who wants to go with me? Someday. Goals. I have some goals. So Paranormal State was a success, but unfortunately, Ryan came out with a book. I think that the book dropped, I want to say either in 2010 or 2011. Inside of the book, Ryan actually admits to being uh, bisexual and the struggles that he has being bisexual and at that time, you know, still wasn't completely accepted in the society and he's also Catholic. So he was strugg struggling with having his religion accepted as well as his sexuality. In 2012, all of his fans and followers found out that he had been diagnosed with pancreatic cancer and he'd been fighting it for a while. He just kind of kept it secret from everyone. In 2013, Ryan had announced that he was going to be going on tour, which was basically a paranormal tour. And I'm sure some of you guys have gone to some of those, which is where they do ghost hunts and he does lectures and he interacts and does meet and greets with the fans. 
and he sold out tickets on all of his lectures that were basically an American trip and it included Chip Coffee and the entire original PRS team. There was another psychic that was involved which is Michelle Belanger. So 2013 is when people were pre-buying the tickets, 2014 was when the actual investigation meet and greets were supposed to take place. That year, 2014, he also had announced that his long-term partner, which is Sergi, who is also from Paranormal State, that him and Sergi would be getting married. And then a year later, he announced that it had been a joke. Nobody really knows if they're married or not. They're always posting pictures together. I don't know. Nobody really knows the truth behind that. I don't know why he would announce that if it was a joke. Maybe he wanted to see how people would react. In 2014, he stated that, um, unfortunately, even though he had sold tickets out on his PayPal uh, website, basically for this tour, that he would not be able to go on tour because his pancreatic cancer had taken a turn for the worst. And people were okay with it. They felt really bad for Ryan, but the problem was is that they wanted refunds on the tickets. Later that year in 2014, Ryan did issue an apology. However, he did state that he never received any of the money from PayPal, that it was PayPal who needed to give the refunds. A lot of people thought that maybe he had really overly expensive health bills and he was trying to basically scam his fans to keep the health bills down or was he using it for other improper ways. Nobody really knows what happened. Basically, he was accused of fraud by a lot of people. He lost a lot of fans from it. The meet and greet, the, the tour was basically canceled without notice and no one ever got refunded. People claimed that they were out several hundred dollars a piece. Ryan at that time had also mentioned somewhere on social media that he thought maybe his pancreatic cancer could have been related to demonic possession or being around demons. And um, then later, once again, he had stated that it had been a joke. Eventually, North Carolina did actually do a report on him for fraud. The local news station had a reporter do like a consumer report on protection against consumers that were really frustrated about all the money that they had lost. There was many people that came together um, to defend Ryan because of his pancreatic cancer. And there were other people that were, um, you know, saying basically that he had frauded them out of a lot of money and that he needed to refund them. At that point, Ryan had never responded or issued another statement. He still had claimed that he did not receive any of the money. All of the money had gone to PayPal and PayPal was the ones that needed to return the money, basically. There were fans that claimed that they had gotten some sort of an email stating that they would be receiving a check in the mail for the refunded amount that was actually from like PRS or something like that and they never did receive the check or the refund in the mail. Some of the people that had actually purchased the tickets and that were so upset that they didn't get a refund for their several hundred dollars claims that they actually called some of the venues that were on the tour dates asking the venues if they were booked. The venues actually came out and said that they had never been booked for Ryan, for PRS. Chip Coffee and Michelle Belanger and the entire PRS team was supposed to go with Ryan Buell on this tour and at the last minute when they realized that this was kind of coming out of the cleaners, Chip Coffee kind of distanced himself from Ryan Buell and so did Michelle Belanger and most of PRS ended up breaking up because of what happened with this whole fraudulent issue going on with Ryan Buell. I truly think that all of them wanted to kind of save their own reputation since everything was coming out in the wash that Ryan was not doing things properly. Chip Coffee did release a couple of statements basically saying that he was really sorry for you know what everyone had been through, but that he was not responsible for the funding and for the money and that he was not able to give the, the funding back to any of the people and his followers. He didn't want to lose any of his fans over it. I believe Michelle Belanger did the same thing. And um, that was kind of where it ended. Chip Coffee was up in the Stanley Hotel for Strange Escapes and he was taking questions in his seminar and Blake, as brash as he is, because you guys have seen him on our channel investigating, Blake did raise his hand and ask Chip a question. He asked Chip what his opinion on Ryan Buell was and if their friendship would ever be mended from what Ryan did as far as scamming. Chip did, t he laughed at Blake, he was really embarrassed. Um, Blake said that he probably didn't want that kind of a question. And Chip did state that he loved Ryan and that Ryan would always be true and dear to his heart. But unfortunately, he screwed a lot of people and Chip j basically didn't want his reputation ruined because of Ryan Buell. I did see not too long ago, though, that Ryan did purchase tickets to go to Lorraine Warren's house for one of those dinners for uh, to meet Annabelle the real doll. 
and to actually see the museum, although I think that Ryan and Lorraine had been friends for many years anyways. My opinion on all of it is it's really sad because I think that Ryan had a really big career in the paranormal. Um, he has made a few announcements here and there since basically 2014 when all of this ended, saying that he thought he was going to get in another contract negotiation with a new network, trying to get a new show um, to basically investigate and do something else. And I really think that at this point, no one really wants to sign him because of the controversy that follows him. I knew all of this stuff just because I'm a paranormal geek and I try to know everything in regards to the investigators that are inside of the paranormal celebrity community. The problem is, is that I actually Googled Ryan's name and the first things that come up is that he's a fraud and that he frauded people out of thousands and thousands of dollars. And the problem is, is that when you're working in production and with production companies, producers, even other executive producers, if you have some sort of a really bad background like that, especially with money and frauding people, especially some sort of a major network like the Travel Channel or even Sci-Fi or even A&E again, like in Ryan's case, they don't want to put a lot of money into producing a television series. Um, and then, you know, they it costs thousands of dollars between flying camera crews out there, you know, wherever the location is, transporting all of the equipment, all that stuff costs a lot of money. Plus, whoever's on the team, like PRS or lead investigator, they make a lot of money. They actually get a salary out of it, as well as the actual production crews. Executive producers and networks and even production companies do not want to put out thousands and thousands of their own dollars to produce a series that will just flop in the end. You know, the ultimate goal for every producer, production company, and network is to continue signing a series over and over again because the longer the series is on, the more, you know, fans become aware of the series that follow the people that want to watch them. And so it just, it, it pays out in the end. All of the sponsors that come through on like the television commercials through the network get paid. It's like a big money-making market and it's, it's a really big circle. So they're not going to want to waste money on something that could potentially have a really bad outcome. That makes me feel really sad for Ryan. I personally am still a Ryan Buell fan. I did not buy any of the tickets, so I didn't have any you know repercussion personally. If I would have lost $700, of course I would have been upset, you know, not seeing him for, you know, the tour if that was what I would have purchased. However, the right thing to do would have been to refund the fans because one person that's here may say, it was my money, I'm not worried about it, it's not that big of a deal. Yes, but there's someone over here that could be working minimum wage and they saved for months and months to pay for this ticket and they can't get refunded back, and it's just not the right thing to do. I'm really somebody that believes in karma, and I feel like somebody that, that takes that much money for people and can't even release like some sort of an apology or a statement to, to you know explain what happened or what went on, um, it just appears to be really fraudulent, and it's really unfortunate that it could have cost him his career. And to be perfectly honest, if Ryan really was suffering from the cancer issue and paying bills like everyone's suspecting that it came down to, with the following that he had from the paranormal community, if he would have set up some sort of a GoFundMe page, I'm assuming people would have willingly donated without kind of being conned and frauded into purchasing a touring ticket, and then it falls through. The biggest thing here is obviously Chip Coffee is still one of the biggest people in the paranormal. He has decided to distance himself from Ryan Buell, which tells us all that it's definitely not some sort of just a fraudulent claim that's been made. Something serious has happened, unfortunately, that has caused kind of you know, an uncomfortableness between the friendship of Chip and Ryan. I would love to see Paranormal State to come back someday and actually use the technology that we have now. I just don't see it happening, but if you ever get bored, it's usually on Netflix. Sometimes it reruns on random cable channels. Make sure you watch some of the old Paranormal State. It'll make you feel a little bit more authentic than some of the stuff that we've seen nowadays. Please leave me good comments below. Hey, have you guys seen Paranormal State? Let me know if you've watched it. Give me your opinions. I'd love to hear what you guys think about it. Please give me a thumbs up. Please subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Any requests that you guys want to see, I might start digging into some older paranormal shows just for fun. And I will catch you guys next time.